He is known for his theory of sovereignty. He is recognized for being an influential writer on demonology. He is Jean Bowden. In the tumultuous era of the Protestant Reformation, a French jurist and political philosopher emerged, leaving a lasting impact on the concept of sovereignty. His name was Jean Bowden. Born into a time of religious conflict in France, Bowden's philosophical journey was shaped by the complex dynamics of his society. While Bowden was known to be a nominal Catholic throughout his life, there were intriguing hints of his critical stance towards the authority of the papacy over governments. In fact, there were even whispers that he may have converted to Protestantism during his time in Geneva. This religious ambiguity added depth to his perspective as he delved into the realms of law and politics. Bowdoin firmly advocated for strong central control of a national monarchy, seeing it as a remedy to the factional strife that plagued his country. His belief in the necessity of a unified and powerful government stemmed from the turbulent times he witnessed. However, it wasn't just political theory that occupied Bowdoin's mind. In his later years, he embarked on a dialogue among different religions, including representatives of Judaism, Islam, and natural theology. This remarkable endeavor sought to find common ground and foster concord among divergent beliefs. Though this dialogue was never published, it revealed Bowdoin's profound desire for coexistence and harmony in a world torn apart by religious divisions. Jean Bowdoin's legacy as a jurist, political philosopher, and writer on demonology continues to shape our understanding of sovereignty. His philosophical journey, marked by his nuanced religious views and quest for concord, serves as a reminder of the complex interplay between politics, religion, and the pursuit of a just society. Jean, a young and curious scholar, embarked on a journey that would shape his understanding of philosophy and the world around him. After obtaining release from his vows, he made his way to the vibrant city of Paris in 1549. Eager to expand his knowledge, he enrolled at the university and also found himself studying at the College de Cotter Longs, a hub of humanist-oriented education. It was during this time that Jean's education took a unique turn. While he was exposed to the orthodox scholastic approach, he also found himself in contact with Ramist philosophy. This alternative perspective challenged the traditional methods of thinking and opened Jean's mind to new possibilities. In the 1550s, Jean's thirst for knowledge led him to the University of Toulouse, where he delved into the study of Roman law under the esteemed Arnaud du Ferrier. It was here that he began to develop a fascination with comparative jurisprudence, exploring the differences and similarities between legal systems. As his studies progressed, Jean's scholarly pursuits expanded beyond law. With the patronage of Gabriel Bouveri, the Bishop of Angers, he embarked on a Latin translation of Appian of Apamia's work. Jean's dedication to his craft was unwavering, and he envisioned a future where he could establish a school in Toulouse based on humanist principles. However, despite his passion and efforts, Jean's dream of a humanist school in Toulouse never came to fruition. Disheartened but undeterred, he made the difficult decision to leave in 1560, seeking new opportunities to share his knowledge and philosophy with the world. Jean Bowdoin, a prominent philosopher and attorney in 16th century France, found himself caught in the midst of the tumultuous wars of religion. As a member of the Parliament of Paris, his religious beliefs remained uncertain during this period of intense religious conflict. However, he publicly affirmed his Catholic faith, joining his fellow members of the Parliament in taking an oath of allegiance in 1562. Despite the chaos that surrounded him, Bowdoin remained committed to his intellectual pursuits. He delved deeper into his interests in legal and political theory, publishing significant works on historiography and economics. His scholarly endeavors brought him into the circles of Prince François d'Alençon, the ambitious and intelligent younger son of Henry II. Alassa was a leader of the politiques, a faction of political pragmatists who sought to navigate the treacherous waters of religious strife. Bowdoin found himself drawn to the philosophies of the politiques, who advocated for a more moderate approach to religious conflict. They believed in prioritizing stability and the common good over rigid adherence to a particular religious doctrine. Within this context, Bowdoin's famous quote, My life will recur in exactly identical fashion, takes on new meaning. It reflects his recognition of the cyclical nature of history, particularly the recurring patterns of religious conflict. Bowdoin understood that the wars of religion were not isolated events but part of a larger cycle that had repeated throughout history and would likely continue to do so. Bowdoin's philosophy, influenced by the politiques, has enduring relevance in our daily lives. It reminds us of the importance of seeking common ground and compromise in the face of religious, political, or ideological differences. It teaches us to value stability and the well-being of society as a whole, rather than being rigidly dogmatic in our beliefs. 
Bowdoin's insights into the cyclical nature of history also serve as a reminder to learn from the past and strive for peaceful resolutions to conflicts, rather than perpetuating the same destructive patterns. Jean Bowdoin, a renowned philosopher and political thinker, found himself at a crossroads in his life after the failure of Prince Francois' attempt to ascend the throne. Seeking a new path, he transferred his allegiance to the new king, Henry III. However, Bowdoin soon fell out of favor with the king during the Estates General at Blois in 1576-7, where he tried to moderate the Catholic party and prevent a new war against the Huguenots. Disheartened by the political turmoil, Bowdoin decided to retire from political life. In February 1576, he had married Francoise Trulliard, the widow of Claude Bayard. Taking over the charges of his wife's family, who were royal attorneys, Bowdoin focused on his personal life and intellectual pursuits. During this time, Bowdoin had the opportunity to visit England in 1581 as he accompanied Prince Francois, now Duke of Anjou, on his second attempt to woo Queen Elizabeth I. It was during this visit that Bowdoin had a chance to witness the English Parliament, gaining valuable insights into the workings of another political system. Despite his intellectual pursuits, Bowdoin remained true to his principles. When asked to secure better treatment for English Catholics, he declined, much to the dismay of others. His commitment to religious freedom was further solidified when he witnessed the trial and execution of Edmund Campion, a Catholic martyr. Bowdoin publicly expressed his opposition to the use of force in matters of religion, speaking out against the injustice he had witnessed. Tragedy struck when Prince Francois, now Duke of Brabant, embarked on a campaign to expand his territory. Bowdoin, despite his disapproval, accompanied him. Unfortunately, the campaign ended in disaster, with the prince's death in 1584 and Bowdoin finding himself trapped in the aftermath. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.